In this video, you're gonna learn two different ways to make pop-ups and connect them to your website. The first is a dynamic link pop-up, like this one right here. And the second I'm gonna show you is a CSS triggered pop-up, like this one right here. And I'm in fact gonna show you a third one as a bonus, which is gonna be a form-based pop-up after a form submission. Like that one right there. We're gonna see all three in this video and how to make them. So let's get to it. The first thing we wanna to do to make this happen is create two pop-ups, because we have two pop-ups for this example video. There's two ways to, well, there's three ways to trigger them, Elementor. I'm gonna show you two. The third way is with a form, but we're not gonna worry about that right now. I might touch on that later. But to do this, we need Elementor Pro. And Elementor Pro, under the templates menu, gives us the pop-up option. Here, we can click on Add New Pop-up, and we can give it a name. I'm gonna call this one Dynamic Link. That's one of the ways to trigger a pop-up. Click on Create Template. And I'm just gonna choose this one right here. The point of this tutorial is not customizing and making a pop-up look fancy. The point is, how do we trigger it? So we have this crazy distracting thing down here. That's the footer. There's the header up there. And here's our pop-up in the middle. You can change the text, change the form, change everything you like with the settings on the left-hand side. Go to settings over here, you have specific pop-up settings, and then we click on any one of the widgets, and we can drag and drop more widgets in here, as we're used to with Elementor. So for the dynamic link pop-up, we're actually done, because we're just gonna use this template. You'd wanna customize the pop-up to what you want it to be, but we have to do no other settings inside of the pop-up settings. We have to do no other settings inside of conditions, triggers, or advanced rules. Just click on save and close, and that pop-up is ready. That'll be the dynamic link pop-up. We're gonna create the second one as well really quick. Let's go back to pop-ups, click on add new. I'm gonna call this the CSS trigger pop-up. And we're gonna to touch on what the difference is. They look like they function the same way and they're very similar, but there is a big difference that I'll tell you about in a little bit. So let's use this one right here. Super nice, even has a countdown timer. Let's make this countdown actually work. There we go. Now we have an actual countdown timer. That's great. And you can customize this any way you want, just like the other one, just like any pop-up. But under settings, we want to add something under the advanced tab or on the advanced tab. This open by selector. In here, we can add an ID or a class. These are both for CSS. And CSS determines how a website looks. So this blue background right here is set by CSS. The font style is set by CSS. The spacing is set by CSS. The movement of this little widget right here, watch it move. Does it move or am I seeing things? It does move. So that movement is CSS. Like every, almost every design element is CSS. And the way that we can tell specific things on a website to do specific things design-wise is with IDs and classes. The ID is normally used only once on a website. And classes, the same class can be used many times. So if you wanted to give this pop-up an ID and use it only once, if you're following best practices, you could give this, uh, I don't know, my coolest pop-up and use that only once in your site. That'd be a best practice. You could use it in other places, but that's not a best practice. So with IDs, you use them just once. If you make it a class, you could use those lots of times and that'll be totally fine with best practices. So I'm gonna make it a class and I'm gonna publish it. And for the conditions, technically you shouldn't have to put anything in here, but I was having some trouble. So I'm gonna add a condition and I can leave it as the entire site or you can set it to specific pages. But there's a reason you might wanna do it for the entire site, which you're gonna learn later in this video when I show you the difference between the dynamic pop-ups and the CSS ones. So let's put it on the entire site, save and close. Now let's exit out of here. We've got our two pop-ups and I've copied the CSS selector for the second pop-up. And that'll become important when I, when I define or explain the difference between a dynamic link pop-up and a CSS pop-up. So let's go to pages. Let's go to our homepage, edit with Elementor. You see that little preload thing there, that fancy thing? 
I've got a different tutorial showing you how to do that. If you want to know how to do a preloader, that one was built outside of Elementor, but added with Elementor using the Elementor code widget. Anyway, I'll put, I'll put the tutorial on the card up above if you want to check it out. Uh, so now that we're here, any link item, we can turn into a dynamic pop-up. So this one right here is a button, so it has a link. Um, let's see, if we make this a link, I'm not quite sure if, if we, let's make this a link. No, so you can't make it a link. It has to be an Elementor link widget, like buttons, for example, because then we have this dynamic tag. Click on that, and we go down to Actions, Pop-up. Click it again, and we can choose the pop-up by typing it in. That's the one. And then we just save it, and that's ready to go. Now let's add the CSS trigger pop-up, and this is where things get a little different. For example, here is a skinny little button right here. Go to the Advanced tab, and then under CSS Classes, because we made it a class in the pop-up creator, we want to paste our class that we copied and take out the period. If you're using an ID, take out the hashtag that you would have had before the ID. I'm just going to copy this for future use. Let's update that. We come back out to the front, and we click on this button here. And we've got our CSS trigger pop-up, which is different than the other pop-up, the dynamic link pop-up. Now, if we also want to do something even trickier, we could go into the section settings for this section right here, go to the advanced tab, add a CSS class of that same pop-up trigger, the CSS pop-up. Let's refresh and then scroll down. This is where we added it, I believe. If I click right here, there's our pop-up. You can't add a dynamic link here. Wait, can you? No. Yeah, so you couldn't be add the dynamic pop-up here. I'm 99% sure. And you can add the CSS one. You can also create links manually. This is even a little trickier. So if I create a link here, just using the regular WordPress link option, um, privacy policy, must have one of those on here. Just find me a link. There are no pages on the site. Yeah, let's make this uh, a link to google.com. Okay, so we have a link. There's no pop-up associated with that link currently. If I switch from visual to text, and if I delete this, or just make it a pound. Let's just make it a pound instead of our hashtag, instead of the actual link. And then I want to add in class equals and paste that class inside, inside quotes. Then we have the closing tag over there. Now if I update this, let's remember what that, oh, it'll, it'll appear. Don't remember the words. It's these guys right here. If I click on this, we should have the pop-up appearing. And there it is. And the hash makes it jump up to the top of the page. If we take out that hash, let's take out the href actually. Then we won't be jumping up. Click on that now. Pop-up appears right there. Boom. You can't do that with a dynamic pop-up. But with a CSS pop-up, you can. And you can even have the CSS pop-up appear on any page you want on your website by just adding the CSS code to the section you want. Whereas the dynamic one, you'd have to go and find the specific buttons on the specific pages and associate it with that, which is fine. But it's a little more work. You could also create a template just for the button that triggers the dynamic one and add the template to all the pages on your site where you want it. And that can make it a little bit easier. But doing the CSS for the trigger, I find it to be even easier than the dynamic one. And you can use it in more places. It's more versatile. And it works really well. The third one that I said I wasn't really going to do, but I could show you really quick, is for forms. So if you have a form, let me drag it on here. There we go. And if we go to actions after submit, we can open a pop-up. Which pop-up? We define it right here. Action, choose a pop-up. We can open or close a pop-up. So if you had the if you had this form in a pop-up, you could choose to close this pop-up if you wanted. But we don't have any pop-ups open, so I'm just gonna open one after they submit. And I'll make it the dynamic one. Doesn't matter which pop-up pop it is. 
update. And now if I submit that form, it should send us a pop-up. There's the pop-up right there after form submit. So this pop-up could say something like, hey, thanks for signing up for the newsletter or here's a free bonus you weren't expecting. I wouldn't have another opt-in like we have here, but it could be uh, whatever. Whatever your creativity leads you to think will be great for your users and your visitors and your customers. If you haven't done so yet, make sure you click subscribe and ring the bell so you don't miss new future videos. And then check out this video right over here, which shows you how to create a cool exit intent pop-up using Lottie files for animations inside of Elementor. It's a great tutorial. Make sure you check it out. It's right over there. I'll see you there.